All right, it's uh, May 30th. We're in uh, a farm in Ohio County, Kentucky. <clears throat> we got a call from the grower that said he had some green striping going on through the field. Uh, from discussing it with him on the telephone, I thought he was having problems with his anhydrous toolbar. Uh, we got here this morning doing our investigations. Uh, you can see that the green, we're standing by one of the green stripes. <clears throat> pretty distinct difference between where the stripe is and where the stripe isn't. Uh, this stripe is all across the whole field. We're standing in a 300 acre field right now. Uh, the first thing that you need to do when you're coming on calls like this is determine is there a pattern? If there is a pattern, what is that pattern? We got out here this morning and we done some measuring. We found out that uh, this green stripe it comes about every 50 foot. Okay, when you, when you find that pattern, you gotta start asking questions. What does this grower have that is 50 foot? You know, he's a pretty large grower. He's got some big equipment. I call him up, sir, what, how big is your anhydrous toolbar? He says his toolbar is every 40, or his toolbar is 40 foot long. So it'd be really hard to get a pattern every 50 foot with a 40 foot toolbar. So we can pretty well rule out that the anhydrous applicator is not the problem in this particular field. The next question you ask, well maybe, maybe he did something with his planter. He had one or two rows that were deeper than others, uh, or maybe one or two rows that were placed more shallow, but you can see that this line goes to a, a slight angle of the row. So you can pretty well rule out uh, that this problem was not caused with his planter. So again, 50 foot is the pattern. This guy does have his own spreader truck. Most of the time he does not use it. When he does use it, he spreads on 50 foot. He most of the time hires his fertilized done, but the, the co-op got behind, so he just run his fertilized truck down there, got, got a couple loads of fertilized, went out here and spread it. So my thinking is that this is probably caused by the spreader truck. Uh, when you see a narrow band like this, usually it's one of two things. One, he did not turn his fans on. Uh, I don't think that's the case here. If he put that much fertilizer, he's running the rate of 400 pounds of 92330. If he forgot to turn his fans on, we would definitely get a pattern like this, but it would be so hot, it would be a dead strip about a foot and a half wide, and then green corn on either side of that. So my, fly, my thinking is he had a small hole, his fans wasn't set right, he was dribbling a little bit of fertilizer on the ground right behind the truck. So our theory today is that this problem was caused by a spreader truck. You can see the corn side by side here. You can see a very dramatic difference in overall size. This being in between the streaks, this on this on the right side being right on top of the streak. Uh, the corn is pretty well V7 uh, for both of these. This one just looks like it's taking in a lot more nutrients, a little bit more internodal space, a little bit bigger. So if our theory is this was caused by a spread spreader truck, we want to verify that theory. So what we did, we gathered up some tissue samples and some soil samples. We labeled this uh, more uh, normal corn. We're gonna send it off to the lab. And this on the right, we, we labeled that dark green corn. We'll send that off to the lab as well. Hopefully what we're going to find that the nice dark green sample is loaded up with P and K much, much higher than this. So we'll get this sent to the lab. They'll verify that for us. We can call the farmer and say, hey, you might want to do a little extra work on your spreader truck before you use that next year.